All right, this is grade three, module one, lesson 11, where we're gonna be modeling division uh, using arrays and tape diagrams. And, and the idea of using it multiple ways to, to visualize division is really important because we're asking students to compare and contrast these two different ways of showing things. And best practice in educational research says that uh, the use of compare and contrast is really a powerful tool for um, helping students learn complicated things. So in this problem, we have Miss Meyer, and she organizes 15 clip clipboards equally into three boxes. And the big main question is how many clipboards are in each box? And we're supposed to model with both an array and a tape diagram. So the important thing about the array is they say they want each column to represent the number of clipboards in each box. Okay. Now this last sentence right here, show each column as the number of clipboards in each box. We're going to honor that but from a big, huge mathematical point of view, this is not a huge, big, important math concept. So if students just can't quite remember how to do this last little sentence, if they're confusing columns with rows, that's not a, a huge deal. You don't need to spend an extra day on this lesson. Just move on, and as students become more mature and as they become more accustomed to the concept of thinking about columns and rows, they'll eventually get it. So let's address this. Uh, let's do this problem. First it says, let's model it with an array. So it says, we're going to organize 15 clipboards equally into three boxes, and they want each column to represent the number of clipboards in each box. So that kind of means each column represents each box, right? And so I'm just counting, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So there's my fifteen clipboards arranged into three boxes, and each column shows us how many clipboards we have in that box. So if I wanted to, I could skip count. Oh, five, ten, fifteen. So I now have fifteen clipboards. So that's the array. If we wanted to model this using a tape diagram, um, it would look like this. So we're going to draw our little tape diagram, and we're going to cut it up into three because that represents our three boxes. And then I would put in my little clipboards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, and there you go. Now, they want us to label it, so let's label it. So this would look like, oh, maybe I would do 15 clipboards like this, 15 clipboards, and then I might say something along the lines of three boxes. All right, this part right here, this is not make it or break it. There's no one way to label, uh, nor is there really one way to draw your tape diagram. But what I've drawn, shown, shown you is probably the most common way of doing it. All right, let's try another example. We've got 16 action figures. They're arranged equally. So that's 16 right here, equally on two shelves. How many action figures are on each shelf? Model the problem with an array and a tape diagram. And we want each column to be the number of action figures on each shelf. All right, so we're going to essentially have two columns because we have two shelves. To me, this doesn't make sense. Shelves go left to right, so I would I think I would have made each row as the number of action figures, but hey, that's okay. We're going to roll with it. So we're going to go. There's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So now there's our array, and if we wanted to do skip counting, we can see that oh, eight plus another eight is sixteen, so it's eight sixteen. Uh, and now to draw it as a tape diagram, there's our tape. And we're going to cut it into two because we have two shelves. 
And then I would do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And to properly label this, I would call this two shelves, sixteen figures or action figures. All right. Now this is one of those examples where you know, it, it would kind of make sense if we had changed it a little bit and, and made each row be the shelves. And we'd say, well, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Because now we would kind of get a sense of here's a shelf and here's a shelf. But that's the neat thing about math, and that's the neat thing about multiplication in particular, is this kind of like, I think of it as a commut commutative nature of multiplication, which is this array right here is essentially showing 8 times 2, while, um, oops, this array down here is, let's see, this array down here is largely showing 2 times 8. But that's how cool, why math is so cool, because it's, in this case, multiplication, it is commutative. And this is going to be our last example for this video. Corey checks out two books a week from the library. How many weeks will it take him to check out 14 books? They don't tell us that we have to use an array or a tape diagram, so that means we get to choose. What are we most comfortable with? Um, I'm probably going to, I don't know, let's make an array. I think I would do an array. I'd say, oh, here's two books, so that's one week. Here's another two books, that's another week. Here's another two books, so that's three weeks. But let's just keep going so that we're up to six books. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And so I can see, now I'm going to take this array and it's going to end up looking like a tape diagram because if I look at this, each column represents a week. So I can see that it's going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oops, I don't want 8. I only want 14 books. So I don't, I don't need this week. I went too far. So there it is, 7 weeks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Good, there we go. If I wanted to label it, I would say, all right, that's 7 weeks, 14 books. And there we go. You'll notice the array and the tape diagram. In this case, since I kind of went horizontal, the array and the tape diagram look a lot the same. And that is lesson 11 for third grade module one.